Hello and welcome to Chit Chat with David Leonardis. I am so excited to be bringing you this brand new segment and the exciting thing is is that I have four million dollars in art right behind me. We have Picasso originals, Renoir originals, Toulouse Lautrec originals, and Gaston Longchamps. What brings us here today is these fabulous co-authors of the new book Picasso and the Secret Muse Leslie James and Diane Stevenette. Thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. Thank you, Thank David. You. <laughs> so wonderful. Uh, renowned art collectors, art historians, uh, MFA holder uh, for uh, Diane, and um, one of the most charming things ever that I have even found is that Leslie James met Picasso and he has several photographs of Picasso, and I personally, as we all know, am a ravenous art collector, and will be personally adding the photos taken by Mr. James here of Picasso to my own collection. I'm tickled, I just couldn't be any happier. And um, so, Leslie, why don't you just tell me a little bit about when you started collecting art, and go right into when you met Picasso. Well, actually, meet our meeting, chance meeting with Picasso, came before my interest in art collecting. Obviously, I was very young. Mm -hmm. I was only 24 at the age, and I was in the south of France on vacation with my brother, Richard, who was 17 at the time, and we were both sailors uh, in our lives up to then. And uh, we went to a bullfight and in Frasier, in the south of France, near San Rafael, in the Côte d'Azur, in the Provence. And um, that was how it sort of all hap happened. and. Uh, I've been collecting art for, for about uh, 30, 25 or 30 years. One of my closest friends was a, quite a wonderful artist. And um, coming from Ireland, art is always a big part of our life there as well. And even before I came over to the States here, I was interested in art back, back in those days too. So initially you had some friends that were artists, and when did you decide that it was part of your life's mission to collect original Renoirs and Picassos and Latrex, which is just, again, so incredibly amazing. Well, I still don't think it's my life's mission, but it's something I, I certainly enjoy doing, and that has really come more serendipitously to me than any other way. And um, I think that is part of the essence of the book that we have written, is that many of the most amazing things that happen to us in our lives come by chance not often by design. And uh, certainly that's what's happened with this uh, Longchamp collection that, that ha we have. It, it simply walked into my life on its own legs, as it were. And it took me a little while to realize what it was. And once I did, and I realized his close relationship with the castle, in his case, since the age of 20, sorry, the age of 11 in 1905, I truly then became very, very fascinated and also of course, Andy Garcia's movie, uh, his betrayal of Modigliani in, in that film, uh, spurred a great deal of interest too. People should see that with Elsa Silberstein as well, a wonderful film. And uh, it was difficult for them in, the, in those days. There was starvation, there was no money. Picasso himself would be happy to get a dollar on the street for one of his drawings. Picasso himself <laughs> happy to get a dollar on the street for one of his drawings. So amazing. From humble beginnings to great, great expectations and fulfillment. We've got so much more interesting information on this fabulous, wonderful shoot, and we'll see you in a minute. Come on out to the Howard Finster Vision House Museum. We're located in Somerville, Georgia, an hour and a half north of Atlanta, 45 miles south of Chattanooga, 644 miles away from the David Leonardis Gallery, Chicago. I've got 300 pieces of art in my old friend's home. He had a vision from God to paint sacred art. There's a ghost there. You can stay in our bed and breakfast. Come on out and we'll see you in Northwest Georgia. 
Hello and welcome back to Chit Chat with David Leonardis. If you're just tuning in, again, we're here with Leslie James and Diane Stevenette, the authors of a fantastic new book, Picasso and the Secret Muse. And I'm so excited that Diane Stevenette is a fabulous arts background person. And I'd like to hear a little bit more about your arts uh. background and that you're an art dealer, and the movie treatment. What's going on with all of that? I think I've pretty much been an art nerd all of my life, I grew up in Alberta, Canada with all those beautiful snow drifts and, and voluptuous curves and uh, the oldest of nine, you know, children. And so my mother was always pregnant. I think that's part of the, the curving. I used to carve the snow drifts and who would know I would become a sculptor, you know, really. In my, uh, I have an MFA in sculpture. I've had three art galleries, a lot of uh, dealings in art and worked for an art conservation lab. Um, cleaning bronzes and, and beautiful paintings, uh, that's an honor for me. I, it, it's, it's like honoring an artist when you are able to clean their art. It's a very humbling experience. Um, I would say, let's see, 13 years in the film industry, producing and doing some acting, and uh, very excited to actually, our book, have now done uh, a treatment and a scene breakdown and you start looking at locations and uh, location scouting and uh, casting. Casting That's is wonderful. the fun part. Yeah. Now were you in any uh, movies that I would know? Oh, <laughs> some low budget ones. I think there's a few Rotten Tomatoes in there but one called The Patriot with Leslie Nielsen and uh, um, Leslie Nielsen yes. from Airplane. Yes. <laughs> Yes, quite a jokester, I might add. He was oh, yeah. a constant jokester. I think it was the year that he had his, he always had a little, a little fart button. And in the middle of the scenes, and somebody would move in a leather chair, and you'd hear this go off, and <laughs> people would jump back. He was just a, a complete uh, treat. Very fun, very fun. High culture and yes. low brow all at the same time, but you have to have some fun and be interested. Now, I'm totally off topic. Does, did Leslie Nielsen collect art that you knew of? I have no idea. I have no Didn't idea. Didn't get there, you know. We were so focused on the film, um, and I was behind the scenes, and, you know, you're just constantly busy. It's a crazy life, crazy life, but I love it. That's so so I'm excited to get going on on uh, working on a film treatment for this and that's wonderful and then I'm fascinated by your interest in sculpture as an art dealer for many years um, too much schlepping with the sculpture for me and yeah. so that's not really anything that I carried but you were fascinated and interested and so you, you know I, I have a I have a friend that used to say I am if this is your thing I am not schlepping your art okay <laughs> uh, and I always think big you know it's like the bigger the piece of wood the 300 year old piece of black walnut let me add it I don't know what it was must have been the landscapes of Canada or something you've that wide open space but I always like to think big and it served me it served me well you know the book project the sculptures the movie um, it's it's good it's, it's all good that's fantastic. Part of being an art collector is um, collecting different types of art, and I always recommend an acrylic, an oil, a serigraph, a lithograph, a mixed media, a pencil drawing, and evidently sculpture. Uh, Absolutely. Not necessarily for myself, but uh, fantastic that it's um, been involved in Diane's life. All right, we have um, fabulous more information. We're going to be talking about Picasso and the Secret Muse, the wonderful book authored by these two fine people and we'll see you in a minute. Welcome to the David Leonardis Gallery, 1346 North Polina Street here in Chicago's Wicker Park. We carry contemporary art, pop art, folk art, photography, and a collection of late 19th, early 20th century French lithographs. Next to me is a Matt Lamb painting. While in Dubai, similar painting sold for $80 a square inch. That would make it $350,000. Here in Chicago, I'll sell it to you for $17.50 a square inch, $75,000. It looks great in your house. Give me a call, and we'll see you on Polina Street.
Hello out there, David Leonardis here. I'd like to tell you about a great opportunity. David Leonardis Productions offers high quality TV commercials at a very reasonable price. Our experienced professionals will work with you to put you at ease and make sure you get a commercial that you will love. What better way to advertise and promote your business than with a TV commercial? Forget about it. Call David Leonardis Productions today and put your business on the cutting edge. Hello and welcome back to Chit Chat with David Leonardis. Again, we're here with these fabulous co-authors of Picasso and the Secret Muse. And I guess the Secret Muse is a wonderful artist, Gaston Longchamps. And we have some of his wonderful art here as part of the collection that we're exhibiting. And Leslie James, please tell us all about Picasso and the Secret Muse. Well, it's a very interesting story because um, we have the the unusual um, event happening of a, a North American Cayuga Indian boy traveling with his parents to Paris, obviously on the ship in those days, um, in, at the age of 18 months. And uh, his father had an art studio in Paris and allowed the young boy to uh, work on the toilet floor, on the back of the door of the toilet in his studio and in one of the walls. He would sit on the toilet seat as a young boy and, and paint. And his father never gave him any guidance. He allowed him to develop his own talent. And uh, as he grew up, he became a very fierce and strong independent and independent. And uh, so at the age of uh, 10, he was uh, working with uh, Renoir, uh, cleaning his brushes in Paris. He drives his bicycle to his house, uh, compliment Renoir and what he was doing. and. Uh, he, Renoir, said, now you go and do what you've done with me, with all of the other artists in Paris. Yeah, he sent him. And so he, he sent him all over the landscape. And uh, as a net result, this uh, young boy, Gaston, uh, developed a personal relationship with Pierre Bernard, with Henri Matisse, with uh, Raoul Dufy, who was an extremely close friend. And with, with of course, uh, Picasso, Max Jacob, and Apollinaire as well. Modigliani. And of course, Modi. But Modi and he w would often paint the same scenes together. So here we have, as it were, an unknown Diego Rivera, right from, not from Mexico in this case, but right from the US of A, that uh, knew virtually everybody in Paris in those days. And his own art was influenced by his friends. George Brock, of course, uh, featured strongly. Um, uh, as did Utrio, Susan Balladon, Utrio's mom was a close friend of theirs. And even uh, when he was uh, four or five years of age, he would be in the Paris restaurants uh, under the table as his father entertained Toulouse Lautrec and Sarah Bernard, the Chevrolet brothers, and others. Very interesting story, an unknown story. He ended up being president of the Salon d'Octom of America. Of America. In, uh, in the 60s and uh, worked uh, also uh, e extensively in theater here in this country and became a leading set designer, if not the leading set designer in the country. Most of the Yale uh, drama department worked through him or under him. And he actually painted set designs for the Ballet Russe in Paris with Picasso and uh, mo on most of the ballets until he left the city. Just incredible. As a, an American, we grow up and our heroes are uh, sports stars and television stars and movie stars. But as an art dealer, an American art dealer, my heroes are all of the people that he has just stated. And to think that um, to be influenced by Renoir and Lautrec and the famous actress of the late 19th, early 20th century, Sarah Bernhardt. It's just um, overwhelming and uh, wonderful that you're able to bring this book to us. And I can't wait to read it myself. And I encourage you all to go out and get it. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that in our next segment. Please. We'll see you in a minute. Hi, I'm David Leonardis. When I need an attorney, I call Sandy Isaacson, the bulldog. He gets it done. He's available 24-7, family law, corporate law, divorce, custody, contract negotiation. You need an attorney who gets the job done. My attorney gets it done. 
He's the bulldog, Sandy Isaacson. Call him today. Okay, welcome back to Chit Chat with David Lee and Artists. We're here with the authors of Picasso and The Secret Muse, and now the co-author, Diane Stevenat, is going to tell us a little bit more about this wonderful book. And I did want to mention that my art inspiration was two artists in college, and when I began to draw, Fred Klein told me that I had the Mo Digliani influence, and to hear these people talk about Mo Digliani, Picasso, Renoir, Brock, it's just really amazing. Please, Diane, share with us some more Thank about you. your book. Thank you. You know, I have to say it's been an honor to join Leslie and work on this project because if it weren't for the letters, the hundreds of letters that Leslie found, uh, we wouldn't even know the history of Gaston Longchamp. It would be lost. And all the stories that go with it, incredible stories that we've put in the book about... Uh, Brock and his accordion on top of the trolley where the all oh, the enclave of the Picasso Bande would get on and travel from one enclave of artists in Montparnasse in Paris to uh, Montmartre and they were drinking and he, they, he said you know our whole lives were about humor we would laugh right laugh and yeah. and drink and the food and uh, this um, this little boy, Gaston Longchamp, who met Picasso when he was uh, 11 through Manolo the sculptor and Max Jacob, the, the writer and poet, um, just said that the history that was there was incredible. He said, when I walked into the Baton Lavar with uh, Manolo the sculptor, I swore I would never end up in poverty like Picasso was at that time. It's, the room was cold and Max Jacob was stirring a pot of rice, they had no salt, no pepper, and in we walked with a bag of groceries, and he said the baguette, the wine, the sausage, the cheese came out, and Picasso, who was in a foul mood, the, the mood lightened, he smiled, and he said it was something that bonded them for life, you know, that, that moment, because uh, as Leslie said, you know, the poverty at that time was immense, and uh, at one time, now, Fran Fernand Oliver, who was Picasso's girlfriend at the time, the cat came through the window and had a big sausage in her mouth <laughs> from some other apartment, and she grabbed it, washed it off, and cooked it for dinner. You know, so that's what, that's what they were under. And we have artists today that struggle. You know, that is the life of an artist, unfortunately. Um, uh, Marie Laurence, who was a beautiful woman, was... Um, always modeling for Picasso. She was in the studio. Fernand Oliver was in the studio. Gaston Longchamp was there. Apollinaire would be there. Max Jacob, Andre Duran, Alice Duran, his wife. And uh, it was always hot, they, Fernand Oliver mentions in her book. Very, very hot in Picasso's studio. Off would come the clothes. Marie Laurent Sand was always nude, she said. Always liked it. And, uh, <laughs> And Gaston Longchamp says in the letter, even though everyone in Paris could cook, Marie Laurence could barely make a pot of tea, and he spells, he spells it B-A-R-E-L-Y, barely make a pot of tea. Oh. So a lot of fun, fun things in this store, in this book, that um, it, we're, we're just excited. We're just the mouthpiece, you know, of, of these wonderful things. It's so interesting that... Um uh, the collection of French lithographs that I have that Leslie and I have been discussing, Le Rire, The Laugh. Uh, the collection is 1895 to 1910, late 19th, early 20th century. A lot of the issues are the same, from humble beginnings to um, great success. And uh, as always, the way to a man's um, heart is through his stomach. And it seems that Gaston Longchamps learned that with Picasso. So exciting. We've got another good segment or two. We'll see you in a minute. Hi, this is Dan Shields, owner of Jetty Security and Jetty Investigations. Do you have the need for security for a private event or need some questions answered about someone? Give us a call. 773-341-6030 or look us up on the web, www.jettysecurity.com. Welcome back to Chit Chat with David Lee and Artis. Always one of the fun segments is we get to talk about the paranormal. And of course, I have the TV show Paranormal Museum. I own Howard Finster's Vision House in Northwest Georgia. Don't you know it's haunted? I have seen the ghost. 
I'm a little nonplussed by the experience, but I'm fascinated by other people's reactions to the ghost. Leslie, have you ever seen a ghost? Do you believe in ghosts? What's going on with the ghosts? Well, <laughs> an unexpected question here, but uh, I, I must say I, I don't think I've ever seen a ghost. Um, That's probably good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Even though I'm from Ireland, leprechauns, of course, I see them everywhere. But ghosts, no. Um, however, having said that, uh, I do believe in the afterlife, if that's another way of answering the question. And um, I do believe that in our dreams that we do interact and meet um, g those that have died before us, shall we say. And perhaps it's their light body that we call the ghost, you know, their, their atman, their soul, their unresolved emotional issues that they're still dealing with perhaps in the afterlife. And perhaps we're part of that afterlife for them as we're living this life here now. So I would say yes, I, I, I think that in most uh, native uh, families it's very important in, in native societies, indigenous people believe in ancestor worship or ancestor communication and I believe in that too certainly. Ironically, I, or interestingly, I had a very vivid dream of Pablo Picasso in, in France uh, only a couple of years ago of course, these things are completely unexpected when they happen. And, uh, but it was a very powerful, lucid uh, experience uh, with, with Pablo Picasso. And in fact, it gave me the inspiration to write this book, quite honestly. And uh, I was in Paris two days later. It was in my house in, in the Languedoc region in the Midi in the south of France when this happened. And... Uh, I went to Paris uh, to come home and uh, visited the Louvre for a moment or two and then wrote the book, started to write the book in the bus on the way from Gare de Lyon to the airport at Charles de Gaulle. And I was inspired, the sort of impetus from this experience, which wasn't a ghost experience but a dream experience, has been the catalyst uh, for this event to take place ironically. I didn't expect to be asked this kind of question, but it's an interesting thing, and I do talk about it in the book. Wow, well, I guess there's some tidbits of information in this book, Picasso and the Secret Muse. All right, Diane, have you ever seen a ghost? Do you believe in ghosts? What is going on with the ghosts? I do believe in ghosts, and I do believe I feel spirit around me all the time. I feel guided many times. Um, very powerful entities I feel around me. Um, even when we were doing the show at the Carpalus Manuscript Museum in California, Santa Barbara, California, um, I had a moment where there's a large painting of Gaston Longchamp's wife, Suzette, and I, it was like I was just looking at it and I turned away and it was like I heard a voice, thank you, all, all Gaston ever wanted was a book and a show with all his work together. Thank you, we finally got our show. I mean, it was a very powerful, powerful wow. moment. Wow, so. that is wonderful and obviously very emotional and you're so genuine in well, your reaction. Well, it took me reaction. by surprise too and it was, uh, I felt very honored that we, I knew we were on track. Wow, nice. well I am honored personally deeply, I hope I don't start crying, <laughs> um, to have interviewed these two fine art historians, people immersed in the arts. This is the life that I have chosen to be involved in art, surrounded by art, to collect art. I personally think that art collectors are better, more well-rounded people and I encourage people to buy art and I encourage you also to buy Picasso and the Secret Muse. Very quickly, what's the web address? PicassoMuse.com, also PicassoCode.com. Such a lovely experience with Leslie James and Diane Stevenette. Thank, Thank you. you so very, very, very Thank much you. for being here. And Thank I am you, just absolutely Thank honored. Thank you, David. We'll see you next time. All right, we are here with the Ernst Hilger Gallery, and this is Ernst Hilger himself. Ernst is friends with one of my pop art heroes, Mel Ramos. Ernst, so cool that you have this Mel Ramos. What can you tell us about it? 
Well, I mean, Mel Ramos is one of my heroes since I'm 18, and I had the chance to start working with him 22 years ago. And I visit him about twice a year, and we publish his books and his editions. And when I came this year, he found this piece in the cellar. It's been 40, 40 years there, and just needed a little restoration. It's from his best years, 68, and it's a masterpiece, and we're very proud to show it here. So, I mean, the hero is now well presented at our booth. Ernst, can you go ahead and tell us, I know it's price available on request, which means if you uh, have to ask, you can't afford it, I cannot afford it, I'd love it, how much is this piece? Well, I cannot afford it either, but we want to sell it for 260000 $260,000. Seems like a bargain for an original Mel Ramos from 1968. Ernst Hilger, the art dealer of my dreams. All right, we'll see you in the next segment. Hello, and we're here with Paul Klein, who is one of the main guys in teaching you how to become a successful artist. He has the Klein Artist Works. Paul Klein. What do you want to know about? You want to know about my thoughts on the show? Yes. I think it's pretty interesting. I think that there's a lot of really good material. There's some really solid dealers who came here who brought, I think, exemplary work. If you take a better look or a deeper look, you can see, you know, younger, more challenging art and things that are a lower price point. I mean, there's a lot of good art here that's like 1500 bucks or less. And I think, you know, you need to be a little bit diligent to... You know, make get get a, a decent sense of what's going on, but I think it's a good show for novices as well as the more established collectors. Let me ask you this separately about what you're doing. How many of the artists that are taking the Klein Artist Works program are going to be the next big thing in art? You know, I don't know how many people are going to be the next big thing. I think a lot of them are doing really well. You know, and I think a few of them are getting exhibited here, and a lot of them are having a whole lot of other kinds of opportunities. Um, you know, f I think frequently the next big thing in art is fairly whimsical and flighty and doesn't necessarily last very long. I hope I'm giving people a longer, more substantive career. Wow, what would be the number one piece of advice that you give out to the artist to go from art being a hobby to actually making a living selling art? Ultimately, I think it's all about relationships. You know, I mean, one, you need to make good art. Maybe three, you need to make good art. Number one, you need to grow your community. You need to take responsibility for your career. The creativity that you apply to your artwork, you should also apply to your career. And you should grow relationships. You should grow community. You should cooperate with other artists. You should see what you can do for others. Kind of like karma. And maybe some of it's going to come back to enable you. I've been selling art for 25 years in the city of Chicago. One of the first people that I learned about selling art from was Paul Klein. What Paul Klein says here is gospel. Listen to it. Do it. Turn yourself into a successful artist and check him out at the website below. We'll see you next time.